morning, boys and girls. My name is Miss Katie, and I'm here today to talk with you guys about one of my favorite things. Now, I know you might not have heard of this word before, and it's a tricky word, but I'm hoping you're gonna give it a try and say it along with me. Has anybody in here ever heard of the word agriculture before? Oh, good. Some of you have heard of it. Can you guys all say agriculture with me? Agriculture. Very good. Now, when I say that word agriculture, I want you guys to think of farmers and ranchers. Raise your hand if you've heard of a rancher before. Awesome. Now, raise your hand if you've heard of a farmer before. Terrific. Well, now that I know most of you have heard of a farmer and a rancher before, let's see if we can work together to figure out what it is these people do. So when you guys hear the word rancher, I want you to think of cowboys and cowgirls. Here in Arizona, it's our rancher's job to take care of three different types of animals. Raise your hand if you can tell me an animal that a cowboy or cowgirl might take care of. Did you say a cow? Well, then you're right. Because of course our cowboys and cowgirls, our Arizona ranchers take care of cows. And the type of cows that they take care of each and every day are called beef cows. Can you guys say beef cow? Beef cow, very good. Now our beef cows provide us with lots of delicious food. Things like hamburgers, hot dogs, roasts, and of course steaks. Okay, so now we know that our ranchers, they take care of cows, but what's another animal they might take care of? Can you think of one? Did you say horses? You're right. Our cowboys and cowgirls have horses as well. And those horses are like the vehicles for our cattle ranchers as they go across the ranches collecting their cattle. So horses are very, very important on our ranches. Now, the last animal that our farmers or our ranchers take care of here in Arizona is a tricky one. So I'm gonna give you guys a clue. I'm gonna make the noise of this animal. And if you know what it is when I make that noise, I just want you to say it out loud. Are you ready? Okay, so our Arizona ranchers, our cowboys and cowgirls, they take care of beef cattle, they take care of horses, and they also take care of <laughs> Did you say sheep? You got it right. Our ranchers also take care of sheep here in Arizona. Can you guys think of something that we get from sheep? Did you say their wool? Well, then you're right. Because we shear our sheep and take their wool to make things to help keep us warm, like wool socks and wool blankets. Okay, so now we know that our Arizona ranchers, they take care of three animals horses, beef cattle, and sheep. Did you guys know that our farmers take care of animals too? They do, but they take care of different animals than our ranchers do. Can you guys think of an animal that a farmer takes care of? Did you say pig? Then you got it right, because our farmers do take care of pigs. And of course, pigs provide us with things like That's right, things like bacon, ham, sausage. Okay, so, hmm, our Arizona farmers, they take care of pigs. Can you think of another animal? If you need a hint, this is an animal that's pretty close to an animal that our rancher takes care of. Did you say cows? You're right. Our Arizona farmers also take care of cows. Do you know what we get from the cows that our farmers take care of? Did you say milk? That's right. Our Arizona farmers take care of dairy cows and those dairy cows, they provide us with milk and we can use that milk to, well, put on our cereal or make things like cheese, butter, and my favorite, ice cream. Okay, so our farmers, they take care of pigs, they take care of dairy cows. Can you think of that last one? Maybe you need a hint? This animal goes 
What is it? Did you say chicken? You're right. Can you guys tell me two different things that we get from chickens? Did you say eggs? That's right. Did you say chicken nuggets? That's right too. We can get eggs and chicken from our chickens. Okay, so now we know that our farmers and ranchers, they take care of animals. But did you guys know that our farmers also do something else? Who can tell me what else our farmers do besides taking care of animals? Did you say grow things? You're absolutely right. Our Arizona farmers and farmers throughout the country, they grow things. And the things that they grow, we call crops. Things like, raise your hand if you eat apples. Blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, watermelon, peaches, pears, bananas, how about broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, all of those different things and so many more are what our farmers grow. So when you hear the word agriculture, I want you to think of farmers and ranchers. And when you think of farmers and ranchers, of course you think about food from the crops and from the animals. But today we are going to spend time talking about one of those other animals or insects that's very, very important to our farmers. And in fact, makes it possible for them to grow many of those crops that we enjoy. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? What's that insect? Did you say a bee? That's exactly right. Bees are so very important for our farmers to grow the crops that they need. Now, can anybody tell me why bees are important? What is it that they do for those crops, for those flowers? Can you think of it? Starts with a P and it's really, really long. Did you say pollination? That's right. Our bees pollinate the crops for our farmers. So today we're going to learn just how important bees are to those farmers. And we're gonna learn all about how bees live. So to do that, we're going to start with a story. How many of you like stories? I love stories, right? So our story today is called The Magic School Bus Inside the Beehive. Now, I want to let you know that I have some really fun things to do at the end of my talk here with you today. But to be able to do those really fun things, it's very important that you listen carefully to the story. So to show me that you're listening carefully, if you're on the ground, I want you to sit crisscross applesauce with your hands in your laps, eyes on me, ears open and mouths quiet. Are we ready? Here we go. The magic school bus inside a beehive. What a perfect spring day, said Miss Frizzle, looking out the window. We thought it was a perfect day too. Perfect for playing softball. But the frizz had something else in mind. It's just right for observing honeybees. We've been studying about all different kinds of insects. Now Miss Frizzle said she had found a beekeeper who would show us his honeybee hives. Do you guys know what a beekeeper is? That's right. It's the people who take care of the bees in their hives. The beekeeper is visiting his hives today. We'll meet him there, said the frizz as she swept out the door. As we boarded the old school bus, Miss Frizzle talked and talked about honeybees. They make a delicious food for us to eat, she said. They help many plants survive and they are a wonderful example of social insects. Do you guys know what the food is that bees make? What is it? That's right, it's honey. 
And what is a social insect? Have you guys heard of that before? A social insect are insects that live and work together in a community. So like a hive of bees, right? A lot of bees get together and they each have their roles. Miss Frizzle drove out into the country and parked the bus next to the hives. The beekeeper was late, so Frizzy took out a picnic basket. Some light refreshments while we pass the time, she said. Sometimes our teacher has good ideas. Does your teacher have good ideas sometimes? I think so. But just as she opened a jar of honey, her elbow knocked a strange little lever. The honey jar fell and we heard a weird buzzing sound. It was the bus. It was vibrating and getting smaller. So was everything in it, including us. Uh-oh, what is happening? Before we knew it, the bus looked like a little beehive and we looked like real bees. We really did. All out, class, buzzed the frizz. One by one, we stepped out the door and looked over at the nearest hive. At the entrance, worker bees were standing guard. Guard bees usually keep out bees from other hives, said the frizz. According to my research, guard bees will bite and sting strange bees. What do you guys think? Do you think they look like strange bees? Hmm. There is one time when guard bees may let in a strange bee, said Miss Frizzle. Sometimes a hive may adopt a lost bee if it is carrying a lot of food. And all bee food comes from flowers. We'll have to visit flowers and get bee food in order to gain entrance to the hive. Follow that bee, shouted the frizz. We flew after a bee that was headed towards some bright flowers. Do you guys know what bees eat for food? Do they eat chips? Cheez-Its? Cheetos? No, you're right. Our bees collect nectar and pollen from flowers. Very good. Observe our bee, children, and do exactly what she does. The bee stuck her long, tube-like tongue deep into a flower and pumped out nectar. We each did the same with a rubber tube. The bee carries the nectar in a pouch called the honey stomach, Frizzy told us. We carried our nectar in a teeny bottle. Pollen grains rubbed off the flower and stuck onto the bee's fur. With her front and middle legs, she combed off the pollen and packed it into pollen baskets or pouches on her back legs. Then she returned to the hive. We packed our pollen and went along. One by one, we landed at the hive. The frizz sprayed us with a bee pheromone or a chemical that bees make. Now we smelled like bees. Then came the scary part. We held our breath as the guard bees brushed us with their antenna, smelling us. If they fell for our trick, we'd get into the hive. If they didn't, we'd get into big trouble. The guards smelled our bee spray and our bee food. They let us pass. Other workers took our nectar and bustled off with it. Hooray, we're free to explore the hive, sang out Miss Frizzle. Do you guys know what types of bees are in the hive? I'm gonna give you a hint, okay? In a beehive, there are three different types of bees. Can you think of one of them? Did you say the worker bees? You're right, those would be like the guard bees that were guarding the hive. Those are the female bees that do all of the jobs in the hive. 
Are there any boys in the hive? Of course there are. Do you know what they're called? They're called drones. And then we have a very, very important bee. She's the biggest bee in the hive, and that is our queen. So we have queens, workers, and drones. Let's see if we can see any of them. The first thing we saw was our bee. She was doing a strange dance. Other bees crowded around her, touching her, listening to her. Miss Frizzle said the dance was a language. With her dance, the bee told others which way to go to the flowers she had found. Did you guys know that bees can communicate? Yeah. Do they communicate like we do? Do they just go up to their friend and talk? Hey, Sally, how are you? Blah, 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 blah. No. What's one of the things that bees can do to communicate? That's right. They can bzzz. That's one of the things they do. But as we just learned here, one of the other things they do is dance. Dancing to communicate. The dance helped the bees find food faster. They did not have to waste time looking for it. They flew off in the direction of the flowers they had visited. Now it's important to know that there are two different dances that our bees can do. And this really helps the other bees know where to go for the flowers. So the first dance that they do is called the round dance. So right here, round, they go in a circle. And this tells the other bees that the food or the flowers is close by the hive. So they're just gonna leave the hive and fly a little circle. What happens if they don't find any flowers? That's right, they just fly a bigger circle. What happens if they don't find any flowers? A bigger circle still. And they keep doing that until their circle is big enough and they have found the flowers. So that's called the round dance or the circle dance. Now, the other dance is called, don't laugh, the waggle dance. Isn't that silly? Can you guys say waggle dance? Very good. Now the waggle dance tells the other bees that the flowers are far away. And this one is pretty tricky. Do you guys know what a figure eight is? How about the number eight? Can you guys draw the number eight in the air? Just like this, draw the number eight. Very good. Now as you draw the number eight, when you get into the middle where the two circles meet, that's where the waggle dance happens. So the bee will come in and she will dance in her figure eight, spin in her figure eight, and when she gets to that straight line, she's gonna waggle her booty. Now, it's important the direction she waggles her booty. So for the waggle dance, the bees use the sun to help for their direction. So as she's going to figure eight, when she gets to the middle line, if she waggles her booty to the left, it means the other bees need to leave the hive and fly to the left of the sun to find the flowers. So what happens then if she's doing her waggle dance and she waggles to the right? Where do they need to go? Did you say to the right of the sun? You're right. Now what happens though if she goes in her figure eight and she just stops and wiggles her booty straight. What are they supposed to do? That's right, fly straight towards the sun. So we have the round dance and the waggle dance. New bees gathered around our bee to get the latest news. We passed the dancing bees and went deeper into the hive. The inside of the hive was covered with beeswax. The bees had shaped the wax into comb, thousands of little containers called cells. Every cell was a hexagon, a six-sided shape. The comb was so perfect, we couldn't believe bees had made it. Make comb, class. If I asked you guys to make comb, do you remember the shape that it needed to be? Remember, it was a six-sided shape that we call a hexagon. Very good. We did our best, but our cells came out pretty lopsided. Luckily, the bees didn't notice us. 
They just tore down our cells and built them over again. Other bees were busy with other jobs, such as making honey. We saw the bees changing nectar into honey. First, they added chemicals from glands inside their head. The chemicals changed the nectar sugars into honey sugars. Then, they spread droplets out and fanned them with their wings. This dried up most of the water, leaving the honey thick, sticky, and extra sweet. We fanned too and helped make the honey. Miss Frizzle said it was okay to eat some honey as long as we left plenty for the bees. They need a good supply of honey to help them survive over the winter, she explained. Do any of you guys eat honey? Raise your hand if you've eaten honey before. Oh, that's awesome. How many of you loved that honey? Me too, I love honey. We stopped eating honey long enough to notice a bunch of worker bees nearby. They were tending a larger bee with a long, thin body. She was the queen. As the queen walked from cell to cell, she laid a small white egg in each one. Did you know that a queen can lay over 1,500 eggs every single day? That's one egg every 58 seconds. So almost one egg every minute of the day. The workers touched the queen with their antenna. They licked her with their tongues and they fed her by mouth to mouth exchange. Ew, it's kind of gross, but kind of cool. Can you guys think of any other animals that might feed each other using their mouth? That's right, birds is another example of that, a mama and her baby birds. In some cells, we saw worm-like creatures. These are larvae, baby bees that hatched out of the egg, said Miss Frizzle. Nurse bees were feeding the babies. Do I see those little teeny worms? Can you say larvae? Very good. The larvae did nothing but eat fast and grow fast. Every time they got too big for their skins, they molted or shed their skins. Then they started eating and growing again. When it is big enough, the larva stops eating, said the frizz. It spins a silk cocoon around itself. Now, it is called a pupa. Can you guys say pupa? Very good. The nurse bees put a wax top on the cell. Inside, the pupa doesn't eat or grow bigger. It changes into an adult bee. This is called metamorphosis. Can you say metamorphosis? Awesome job. When the pupa have finished changing into adult bees, they chew their way out of their cells, continued Miss Frizzle. We saw new worker bees emerging. They let the air dry them off and started working right away. Meanwhile, we heard excited buzzing. What was happening? The queen was leaving the hive and she was taking almost half of the workers with her. They flew away in a thick swarm. What would become of the hive now? Miss Frizzle led the way to the queen cells. Two new queens emerged at the same time. Two queens? Can there be two queens in a hive? You're right, there can only be one. So what happens? After they had dried out, they had a terrible fight. One queen stung the other queen to death. Then she killed the other queen pupa in their cells. Now she was the new queen. Now, I know that might seem kind of sad, 
But one thing that we've learned about our beehives and our colonies is they can only have how many queens? That's right, just one. The worker bees pushed the new queen out of the hive. Miss Frizzle said she was going on a nuptial flight, a flight to mate with the drones. Do you remember what the drones were? Were those boys or girls? That's right, those were the boys. After the new queen left, we heard heavy footsteps. It was a bear trying to steal the honey and the bee larvae. The workers flew out and tried to sting the bear, but its thick fur protected its body. If the bear breaks open the hive and eats all the honey and the larva, the bees may not survive. We have to help! We flew out and dived at the bear, but it kept coming at the hive. We have to use strategy, class, called the frizz. We'll lure the bear away. Miss Frizzle made a beeline for the beehive bus, and we followed. The jar of honey that had spilled before was still on the floor. The bear smelled the honey and came after us. Miss Frizzle, we yelled, do something. She stepped on the gas and the bus lurched forward. As we rounded a corner, the honey jar rolled out the bus door. As the jar fell, it returned to its normal size. The bear started eating honey and forgot all about us. Miss Frizzle reached for a joystick on the dashboard. To our relief, the bus lifted off. It wasn't a beehive bus anymore. It was a bee bus. Down below, we saw the new queen returning home from her nuptial flight. The hive is safe. We are safe. We'll meet the beekeeper another day, class. Right now, we are returning to the classroom. We returned home from our flight too. The instant it six feet touched the ground in the school parking lot, the bee bus changed. It was a full-size school bus again. We were human kids again. Phew. Thank goodness for that last metamorphosis. Thank goodness we changed back to our real selves. I just said that. And back in the classroom, we thought of the perfect project to end the day. Baking honey buns, of course. Did you guys like that story? I love that story. It's one of my favorite because it teaches us all about the bees. So let's see if you guys can remember some of the things that we learned in this story. In here, we learned that there are how many different bees in the hive? How many different kinds? Show me with your fingers. That's right. There are three different bees inside the hive. We have the girl bees, which are our worker bees, and of course that very important queen bee. And then we also have our boy bees, or our male bees, and they're called the drones. And they all work together to go get what from our flowers? Do you remember? That's right, they go and collect the nectar and the pollen from the flowers. And of course they use that nectar and the pollen to make some of our favorite food. What is it? Of course it's honey, we love our honey. So I want to show you guys something pretty special. You see, I have brought with me today pictures from inside a real beehive. Do you wanna see it? All right. Well, here's our first picture. And this shows us what it looks like inside the beehive. And you guys can see here all of our different cells, our honeycomb. Now, do you remember how many sides our honeycomb had? That's right, six sides, which makes it a hexagon. Very good. So you can see inside some of these cells, we actually have 
larva inside there. You can see the little white worms. And then on the outside, uh, we have some of our honey cells as well. So this is our worker bees right here, tending to all of our little uh, larvae in there. Just pretty cool. Now, this happens to be one of my favorite pictures. You know, we learned in our story about how bees feed each other. Do you remember how that worked? That's right, they use their mouth. Well, kind of. Instead of using their mouth, they use this really long tube. It's kind of like their tongue. And it's called a proboscis. Can you say proboscis? Very good. And this allows the bees to feed each other. So you can see here that this bee is shooting honey into the mouth of the other bee. Or nectar anyway. Kind of gross, but kind of cool. On this bee right here, you guys can see all of that yellow sticky powder from the flower. Do you remember what that's called? Of course, that's our pollen. And that's what they use or sticks to their bodies when they fly around and helps them pollinate all of those different crops so that our fruits and many of our vegetables can grow as well. So that would be a drone bee or a worker bee? What do you think? That's right, it's a worker bee because the worker bees are the ones who do all the work. So if you see a bee out flying around, chances are it's gonna be a worker bee. Oh my goodness, this is one of my favorite things. It makes me laugh every time I see it. You see here, we have a bee that's kind of sticking its booty up in the air. And this is something called fanning that our bees do. So if our bee wants to get the attention of all the other bees in the hive, they will release a pheromone or a smell. And then they will flap their wings as fast as they can to spread that pheromone or that smell around the hive so all of the other bees know that she has a very important message for them. Isn't that kind of funny? Fanning. Kind of reminds me a little bit of tooting, right? Fanning. It's how they get the other bees' attention. Oh, this is inside our nursery inside of the hive. So you can actually see our little teeny eggs over here. And then we have our larvae, which is our worm-like creatures, right? And then of course they pupate. They become our pupa and through the process of metamorphosis, they then emerge as our adult bees. Now this bee, the reason why we're seeing it so close is because I want you to see its eyes. Do you guys know how many eyes bees have? Well, I guess let's start with how many eyes do you have? Of course, we have two eyes. So do you guys think bees have two eyes or more than two? That's right, they actually have more than two. Our bees have five eyes. Isn't that crazy? Five eyes. And their eyes are very different than ours. In fact, I want you guys to see how a bee sees. So we asked your teacher to prepare a bee eye for you. And the way that that looks is, well, it's just a bunch of straws that are put together. And the reason why this works is because all of those little straws let you see in little sections or segments just like the bees do. So as you get your bee eye, I want you to hold it a little way from your face. Do you see how I'm a little way? I'm not right here up in my eye. I'm a little bit away and I've closed one eye and now I'm gonna look at my friends. And the way that I see my friends through this is how bees see with all of their different eyes. Why don't you guys give it a try? Isn't that cool? That was so cool. Kind of wish sometimes I'd see like a bee, although it might make it a little bit hard to try. Can anybody tell me what the bee in the middle is called? I'm gonna give you a hint, okay? This bee is the largest bee in the hive. She's the only one of her kind in the hive. And her job is to lay eggs. In fact, she can lay over 1,500 eggs every single day. Do you know what she's called? 
That's right, it's our queen bee. Of course, we know her job is to lay eggs. And these are all of our other worker bees that are tending to our queen bee. Remember, they are always cleaning her and they are always feeding her too. It's a very important job to take care of our queen. Now, this is a little different view of our queen. You're gonna see our queen here has a red dot on her back. Oftentimes, our beekeepers will put a dot on the queen's back just so that they can easily find her when they look inside the hive. In this picture, she doesn't look quite as big as she did in the other one, and that's because her abdomen, right, the bottom part of her body, is actually inside a cell laying an egg right now. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, and this is what it actually looks like. So here's a better example of what our larva looks like, sort of that um, worm-like creature. And you guys might see right here some white stuff. That's actually called royal jelly. And if a bee larvae gets royal jelly, that bee will become a queen bee. So that's the big difference. To become a queen bee, the larvae has to be fed royal jelly. Pretty special. Here's just another close-up version of our bee, um, but this actually is the boy bee. Do you remember what we called those? That's right, the drone. So this is our drone bee. The only job that he has is to mate with the queen. He doesn't do anything else. So there's not as many boys in the hive as there are girls in the hive because, well, they don't do anything. So there's a lot more girls inside that hive just because they do all the work. But the drone looks pretty similar. He's smaller than the queen, but he is bigger than the worker bees. He still has those five eyes and those six legs, just like our other bees. And this is a good picture of a swarm. Have any of you guys ever seen a swarm of bees before? Yeah, that's pretty scary, isn't it? Well, one thing to remember, if you ever see a hive of bees or a bunch of bees in a location, the best thing to do is to go away. Don't go towards it. Because a swarm of bees could potentially be very dangerous because it's made up of all of our worker bees. And can worker bees sting you? Yeah, they can. In fact, there are just two bees inside the hive that can sting you. The queen bee can sting you and the worker bees can sting you because only the female bees have stingers. Now, there are some differences between our queen bee and our worker bees sting. How many of you again have been stung by a bee before? Raise your hand. Oh, yeah, I've been stung by a bee before and I did not like it at all. Well, when I got stung by that bee, I knew that it was a worker bee. And the reason why I knew I got stung by a worker bee is, well, because those are the bees that are out flying around, right? And you probably know by now that when a worker bee stings you, what happens to her? When a bee stings you, what happens? Usually she'll die, right? And that's because her stinger is unique. See, so I want you guys to think of something very pointy, and then I want you to put some little triangles on it or barbs. So think of a fish hook. Hopefully you've been fishing before. And you know how those barbs can stick inside you? Well, that's how our worker bee's stinger is. So when she stings you and she tries to pull it out, the stinger gets stuck in you. And so unfortunately, she then's gonna die. So she can only sting you one time. So knowing that, it's important to recognize that bees don't want to sting you because what happens if they sting you? They die, right? So they don't want to sting you. So if you ever see a bee, don't panic. Just leave it be. Now I did tell you that there is another bee in the hive that has a stinger and that's the queen. And she's the one that you've got to kind of be careful for, right? Luckily, she's usually not out flying around. So as long as you're not messing with a hive, you should be okay with the queen. But the queen's stinger is like a sharp needle. So she can sting you lots and lots of times, right? So we've gotta be very careful with those queens. So hopefully you guys learned a lot about bees today. I told you I was gonna save something uh, very special to the end to show you. And 
You guys were awesome today, so I am going to share it with you. You see, today I brought for you real bees. No, 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 no. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. These are real bees, but they are in fact real dead bees, so they're not going to hurt you. But I wanted to let you guys know what these look like, okay? Can you guys see it well, or do I need to put something solid behind it so you can see it a little bit better? All right, let me actually put it down on this table. That might help you see it a little bit. We can zoom in there. So right here, that little teeny skinny thing, that is our egg. And we know that very quickly after that leg is a, uh, egg is laid, it develops into a larva, which is that worm-like creature there. And then it continues on in the process to become a pupa, pupates. And through the process of metamorphosis here, we get our adult bees. So here, this smaller bee, that's gonna be our worker bee. Remember, that's the girl. Can she sting you? Yes, she can. Then we have our drone, which is a little bit bigger than our worker bee. Remember, his job is just to mate with the queen. And then we have the largest bee, which is our queen bee, the queen of the hive. Remember, just one. Then we also have what our honeycomb looks like. This right here is um, clean cells. And then these here are used cells. So you can tell that they're just a little bit dirty because they've had honey uh, in them. And then this is a cell that one of the bees emerged from. So you can kind of see how that is. Imagine that six-sided cell amongst thousands of other six-sided cells all put together. Now, do you guys remember what the bees go to collect from the hive or from the flowers? Of course, they're going to get nectar, and when they're there, they also get pollen that sticks onto their bodies, right? So it's kind of a fine powder. And then here in the middle, we have a liquid that bees make. Can anybody tell me what it is? That's right, it's the honey. And then we have some beeswax over here, which is another byproduct that our bees can make. So as you guys can see, bees are pretty cool insects and they're very, very important to our farmers. So that as they're flying around, they can pollinate all of those different crops so that we can get all of those delicious fruits and vegetables that our farmers grow. So today, I hope you've learned a thing or two about bees. We've left some really cool worksheets and things for you to do to help you to continue to learn about bees with your teachers. I hope you guys had fun today. I know I sure had fun and we'll see you next time.